Mencius was a Chinese philosopher who is the most famous Confucian after Confucius himself. Life Mencius, also known by his birth name Meng or Ko, was born in the state of Zhou, now forming the territory of the county-level city of Zhuheng, Shandong Province, only 30 kilometers south of Kufu, Confucius' birthplace. He was an itinerant Chinese philosopher and sage, and one of the principal interpreters of Confucianism. Supposedly, he was a pupil of Confucius' grandson, Zisi. Like Confucius, according to legend, he traveled throughout China for forty years to offer advice to rulers for reform. During the Warring States period, Mencius served as an official and scholar at the Jixia Academy in the state of Qi from 319 to 312 BC. He expressed his filial devotion when he took three years' leave of absence from his official duties for Qi to mourn his mother's death. Disappointed at his failure to effect changes in his contemporary world, he retired from public life. Mencius is buried in the Mencius Cemetery, which is located 12 km to the northeast of Zhu Heng's central urban area. A steel carried by a giant stone tortoise and crowned with dragon stands in front of his grave. Mencius's mother, Mencius's mother is often held up as an exemplary female figure in Chinese culture. One of the most famous traditional Chinese four character idioms is a Yi Permel E. This saying refers to the legend that Mencius's mother moved house three times before finding a location that she felt was suitable for the child's upbringing. As an expression, the idiom refers to the importance of finding the proper environment for raising children. Mencius's father died when he was very young. His mother Zhcng raised her son alone. They were very poor. At first they lived by a cemetery where the mother found her son imitating the paid mourners in funeral processions. Therefore the mother decided to move. Your next house was near a markets in the town. There the boy began to imitate the cries of merchants. So the mother moved to a house next to a school. Inspired by the scholars and students, Mencius began to study. His mother decided to remain, and Mencius became a scholar. Another story further illustrates the emphasis that Mencius's mother placed on her son's education. As the story goes, once when Mencius was young, he was truant from school. His mother responded to his apparent disregard for his education by taking up a pair of scissors and cutting the cloth she had been weaving in front of him. This was intended to illustrate that one cannot stop a task midway, and her example inspired Mencius to diligence in his studies. She is one of 125 women of which biographies have been included in the Liena One Quarter Tuan, written by Liu Xiang. Descendants One of Mencius's direct descendants was Dr. Meng Chi, former director of China House, and director of the China Institute in 1944. Time magazine reported Dr. Meng's age that year as 44. Dr. Meng died in Arizona in 1990 at the age of 90. North Carolina's Davidson College and Columbia University were his alma mater. He was attending a speech along with Confucius descendant H. H. Gong. Influence Mencius's interpretation of Confucianism has generally been considered the orthodox version by subsequent Chinese philosophers, especially by the Neo-Confucians of the Song dynasty. Mencius's disciples included a large number of feudal lords, and he was actually more influential than Confucius had been. The Mencius, a book of his conversations with kings of the time, is one of the four books that Suzai grouped as the core of orthodox Neo-Confucian thought. In contrast to the sayings of Confucius, which are short and self-contained, the Mencius consists of long dialogues, including arguments, with extensive prose. Main Concepts on Human Nature while Confucius himself did not explicitly focus on the subject of human nature, Mencius asserted the innate goodness of the individual, believing that it was society's influence a euro its lack of a positive cultivating influence a euro that caused bad moral character. He who exerts his mind to the utmost knows his nature, and the way of learning is none other than finding the lost mind. His translator James Legg finds a close similarity between Mencius's views on human nature and those in Bishop Butler's sermons on human nature. The Four Beginnings To show innate goodness, Mencius used the example of a child falling down a well. Witnesses of this event immediately feel, 
Human nature has an innate tendency towards goodness, but moral rightness cannot be instructed down to the last detail. This is why merely external controls always fail in improving society. True improvement results from educational cultivation in favorable environments. Likewise, bad environments tend to corrupt the human will. This, however, is not proof of innate evil because a clear thinking person would avoid causing harm to others. This position of Mencius puts him between Confucians such as Sun Tzu who thought people were innately bad, and Taoists who believed humans did not need cultivation, they just needed to accept their innate, natural, and effortless goodness. The four beginning sprouts could grow and develop, or they could fail. In this way Mencius integral parts of Taoism into Confucianism. Individual effort was needed to cultivate oneself, but one's natural tendencies were good to begin with. The object of education is the cultivation of benevolence, otherwise known as Ren. Education, according to Mencius, education must awaken the innate abilities of the human mind. He denounced memorization and advocated active interrogation of the text, saying, one who believes all of a book would be better off without books. One should check for internal consistency by comparing sections and debate the probability of factual accounts by comparing them with experience. Destiny, Mencius also believed in the power of destiny in shaping the roles of human beings in society. What is destined cannot be contrived by the human intellect or foreseen. Destiny is shown when a path arises that is both unforeseen and constructive. Destiny should not be confused with fate. Mencius denied that heaven would protect a person regardless of his actions, saying, one who understands destiny will not stand beneath a tottering wall. The proper path is one which is natural and unforced. This path must also be maintained because, unused pathways are covered with weeds. One who follows destiny will live a long and successful life. One who rebels against destiny will die before his time. View on politics, Mencius emphasized the significance of the common citizens in the state. While Confucianism generally regards rulers highly, he argued that it is acceptable for the subjects to overthrow or even kill a ruler who ignores the people's needs and rules harshly. This is because a ruler who does not rule justly is no longer a true ruler. Speaking of the overthrow of the wicked king Zolf Shang, Mencius said, I have merely heard of killing a villain Zolf, but I have not heard of murdering him as the ruler. This saying should not be taken as an instigation to violence against authorities but as an application of Confucian philosophy to society. Confucianism requires a clarification of what may be reasonably expected in any given relationship. All relationships should be beneficial, but each has its own principle or inner logic. A ruler must justify his position by acting benevolently before he can expect reciprocation from the people. In this view, a king is like a steward. Although Confucius admired kings of great accomplishment, Mencius is clarifying the proper hierarchy of human society. Although a king has presumably higher status than a commoner, he is actually subordinate to the masses of people and the resources of society. Otherwise, there would be an implied disregard of the potential of human society heading into the future. One is significant only for what one gives, not for what one takes. Comparisons to contemporaries his alleged years make him contemporary with Sun Tzu, Tzuangzi, Ganozi, and Plato. Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu was a Confucian who believed that human nature is centered on self-interest and greed, and the purpose of moral cultivation is to develop our nature into goodness. This put him at odds with Mencius. Later, the thinker Tzu Tzu declared the views of Sun Tzu to be unorthodox, instead supporting the position of Mencius. Plato Mencius's argument that unjust rulers may be overthrown is reminiscent of Socrates' argument in Book I of Plato's Republic. See also Confucianism, Four Books, Confucius, Zanzai, Neo-Confucianism, Cheng Yi, Tzu Zai, Lu Zhi Yuan, Wang Yangming, Socrates, whose views on the inner truth and education closely resemble Mencius's, David Hume, whose ethical naturalism echoes Mencius, footnotes. References, Chan, Alan K. L., 2002, Mencius, Contexts and Interpretations, Honolulu, University of Hawaii Press. Chan, Wingsit, 1963, 
a source book in Chinese philosophy, Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton University Press. Graham, A.C., 1993, Disputers of the Tao, Philosophical Argument in Ancient China, Chicago, Open Court Press. ISBN 0 8126 7 Ivanhoe, Philip J., 2002, Ethics in the Confucian Tradition, The Thought of Mencius and Wang Yangming, 2nd edition, Indianapolis, Hackett Publishing. Liu, Xuxiang and Philip J. Ivanhoe, 2002, Essays on the Moral Philosophy of Mengzi, Indianapolis, Hackett Publishing. Nivizan, David S., 1996, The Ways of Confucianism, Investigations in Chinese Philosophy, La Soul, Illinois, Open Court. Shun, Kuang Lui, 1997, Mencius and Early Chinese Thought, Stanford, Stanford University Press. Van Norden, Brian W., 2008, Mengzi, with selections from traditional commentaries, Indianapolis, Hackett Publishing. Van Norden, Brian W., 2007, Virtue Ethics and Consequentialism in Early Chinese Philosophy, New York, Cambridge University Press. Wang, Robin R., 2003, Images of Women in Chinese Thought and Culture, Writings from the Pre-Euro-QIN Period through the Song Dynasty, Indianapolis, Hackett Publishing. Yearly, Lee H., 1990, Mencius and Aquinas, Theories of Virtue and Conceptions of Courage Albany, State University of New York Press. External links, Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy Entry, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Entry, Mengzi, Chinese text with English translation and links to Tsuxi's commentary, English translation by A. Charles Muller Annotated Scholarly Translation with Chinese Text, Works by Mencius at Project Gutenberg, Article Discussing the View of Ethics of Mencius from the Philosopher.